Hey guys, I'm Alastair from Trail and Kale, and today I'm reviewing the Arctrix Norvan SL3 trail running shoes. It's these guys here. And a quick look at the outsole. All right, so if you're not familiar with the Arctrix Northern range, it is their really minimal, fast, high performance, super lightweight gear. So they do all sorts from super lightweight, waterproof jackets, running belts, shoes, hats, uh, you name it, they're doing it. So I'm really excited to be taking these shoes on the trails to give you my thoughts on what they're actually like uh, performing in the real world. So my run right now is a really great one for testing shoes. It's just over 10 kilometers, uh, about 300 meters of vertical gain, and it covers all kinds of terrain from forest trails, which are quite soft to hard, rocky trails like so, steep climbs, steep descents, fast flats. So it's really got it all. So I love reviewing shoes, showing you guys my local trails and uh, really putting them through their paces. So let's get to it. Before I get into it though, some key stats on these shoes. They are $160, um, currently coming in two different colors um, as of this review. Um, there's a seven millimeter drop on them. So pretty average, kind of leaning towards a little more than I would like, um, but to be honest, they feel very good. I feel connected to the trails, uh, which is great. One of the staggering features of these trail running shoes though, is that they're only 6.3 ounces. That is crazy. Um, I review a lot of trail running shoes. Right now, among anything that I've reviewed, I believe, uh, certainly right now, it's the lightest trail running shoe I've had the pleasure of testing. So um, that gives you a little bit of information about how light they are and minimal they are. So with that does come some minimal traits. Um, there's not a huge amount of cushioning in the shoes, but they are very responsive and they're super lightweight, so you don't really feel like you're wearing them. Uh, that's great if you're running longer distances um, because your muscles don't have to work as hard, uh, which is also great. But again, if you're running long distances, then you're gonna be feeling that minimal shoe. Um, you're gonna be feeling it underfoot because uh, everything feels a little bit harder and firmer. Now looking at competitors or comparisons or maybe alternative shoes right now, I would say the Hoka Zinal 2, the Salomon S-Lab Pulsar 2, um, and maybe the On Cloud Venture Peak 3 right now. Those four shoes are very similar. Um, most of them having this same kind of sock-like um, one-piece fit where you just slip on the shoes. Um, that makes them very comfortable, but again, it does come with some issues. Um, if your feet don't fit them perfectly, then you do get this kind of um, rumpling up here, and I really don't like the look of that. Um, I have average sized feet. And although I don't feel this on top of my feet, I just don't like the look of it. Um, and that happens on some of these sock-like shoes, unfortunately, but like I said, feels very good. Uh, some features, uh, another feature is that they do have this little pocket, little stash pocket under here, which is great. That works really well for stashing away laces. Keeps the laces out of the way. And it means they won't come undone as well whilst you're running. Really like that. Crazy breathable as well. Super breathable mesh upper here. Um, quite solid. Um, it does have flex. Very nice, and air flows through there like crazy. It's really good. Um, lacing system, pretty standard. On here, like I said, uh, you're very unlikely to get the perfect fit on these because I have average feet. Um, and the mid section of the foot is average leaning towards narrow. So this section here, and on the other side, it's quite narrow. But there's a lot of volume in the shoe above that and in the toe box area as well. So interesting there. Um, 
you might feel that narrow fit on there. If you have narrow feet, then you'll probably be fine. And then finally on the stats on the outsole, loving the grip. It is Vibram Mega Grip. And there are the lugs. Lugs are 3.5 millimeters deep. Um, and I mentioned Vibram Mega Grip because that's what Hoka is using on their Speedgo and Zanal 2. And that rubber, rubber compound is insanely grippy. So great for going up these steep trails like this. Um, really claws onto the trails. I just love that mega grip. Okay, starting with the performance review then. My run starts with some road sections, so I need to get to my trail. It takes about a kilometer to get there. So I get to test the shoes on asphalt. They're very firm, so there's not a hugely cushioned ride on these shoes. Uh, but they are responsive, so I'm able to run quite quickly on road surfaces. Um, I've already done some uphill climbing in the shoes. Um, holding out very well so far. These Mega Grip lugs are pretty beefy. I would like to see a few more lugs on there, specifically uh, the ones that wrap around the front. So they stop here. I would like to see them just crawling, creeping around to the front there. So on those really steep ascents, I would be able to dig in more on the front and really claw into the trails. But um, very good so far, so very pleased with the climbing ability. And they're crazy light, so I'm not hauling up heavy shoes as well as my body weight, so a nice experience on the climbs. Steady inclines, no problem. They feel really good. Going back to how lightweight they are, I mean, yeah, great climbers. Hopefully you can hear me. There's a lot of wind up at the summit, but just wanna let you know, very good at climbing. I haven't run that whole um, steep trail for quite a while, it's quite a climb. And I didn't stop, didn't walk once. So I'm putting that down to my current fitness levels, obviously pretty good because I've been racing quite a lot these uh, last few weekends. But also, I mean, the shoes, they're so lightweight. Um, grip's good. They just generally feel very good and sock-like, so it's almost like an extension of my body when I'm running up hills and really liking that about the Norvan SL3s. All right, I've done a few descents in these shoes. Now they are firm, so if you're running on hard, solid, buff, really rocky trails, anything like that, then you really do feel it when running on steep downhills. The tread's pretty good, it's very good, thanks to that mega grip. Um, but they are firm. I do feel this hard ground underneath my feet a little more than I would like on the fast descents. So it'd be really nice to get a bit more cushioning in the midsole in these. Um, that would just make it a little bit more enjoyable on the hard ground, but like I said, maybe if you run on soft trails or mostly forest trails, then to be honest, they're probably going to be great for that. One other thing as I'm running down this hill with lots of sharp stones, I do feel some of those 
sharper little rocks underfoot so I wonder if they could be improved with a bit of a stronger rock plate or like I said before more cushioning in the midsole just to protect your feet a little more okay then so what kind of shoe is this what kind of trail running shoe is the Norvan SL3 from Arctrix well it's a very minimal shoe um, it is a very proficient all-terrain shoe um, I would say uh, you're gonna not really want to run more than half marathon in these shoes because they are very firm unless of course you're used to very minimal shoes um, and you have a very light-footed running form uh, with a high cadence for example then maybe you're used to this type of shoe um, and you'll get on just fine but I wouldn't really go over half marathon myself in these shoes they're just a bit too firm for me in the type of trails I run which as I said before are rocky hard dusty uh, gravelly kind of northern California trails um, in the heart a lot of the time so for me yeah I am enjoying them they're great climbers very good shoes but I prefer something a little bit more cushioned so essentially that is the Arcturix Norvan SL3. Um, ask me any questions in the comments down below. Um, I love talking about trail running shoes or outdoor gear in general. So I'm always, you know, at the end of the line, ready to take any questions that you might have so I can help you out with that. Also, this review is very much complimentary to my full, more in-depth review on trailandkill.com where I've got more pictures, more insights, um, more details, as I run in these shoes more, um, I kind of add to that post and let you know how I get on in terms of durability and what kind of trails I'm using them for, whether I'm choosing to race in them and all that kind of stuff I add on those reviews on trailandkale.com. So I really hope you enjoyed this review. Give it a like if you did and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. See you next time.